Akira Toriyama, the creator of Dragon Ball Manga, has created an immensely popular franchise which allowed it to spread beyond the pages of comic book series. The anime fathers skyrocketed its popularity and its impact in global popular culture is evident on hundreds of video games which were based on the source material. While most of them were earned praise from both critics and players, but there are some that didn't. Hello everybody, this is your host Riri. Join me as we bring you the top 20 worst Dragon Ball games ever made. Let's begin! Number 20 Dragon Ball Z Budokai Dragon Ball Z Budokai is a fighting game developed by Nims and published by Bandai Namco back in 2012. This game is based in the heat Dragon Ball anime series and was also the first game in the Budokai series which made it even more so highly anticipated by Dragon Ball fanatics. But unfortunately, Budokai received mixed reviews mostly because of its automated special attacks that turned the fighting game aficionados. On the other hand, the developers included some special references to the anime that only fans will truly appreciate. Number 19. Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi This fighting game is based on the Dragon Ball Z manga and anime developed by Spike and published by Bandai Namco for the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Ultimate Tenkaichi was the game that concluded the Budokai Tenkaichi fighting game series, so naturally, it was expected to be something very special. However, it was instead detested because of its storytelling, repetitive nature of the battles, and the very lackluster combat system. It featured commendable graphics but was not enough to salvage any appreciation from players as it was tagged one of the worst Dragon Ball games ever released. Up next at number 18 is Dragon Ball Raging Blast. Dragon Ball Raging Blast is a fighting game developed by Spike for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. It was one of the most highly anticipated Dragon Ball games as indicated by its sales of 58,000 copies in Japan within its first week. Initially, it was thought to be very ambitious and innovative with its interactive and responsive environment. But a fun soon uncovered that there wasn't much to the game beyond that. The story arcs, the dragon battle collection mode, gaming mechanics, and the camera were common denominators on the critics' list of reasons this was among the worst Dragon Ball games ever. At number 17 in our list of the worst Dragon Ball Z games ever made is the 3D action adventure beat'em up Dragon Ball Z Sagas. This was developed by Avalon Software and published by Atari for the GameCube, PlayStation 2, and Xbox. While Dragon Ball Z Sagas brought the, with a lot of hype and some interesting gameplay mechanics. Despite its ambition, Many labeled it as a commercial failure as it introduces a lot of features but never really delivered on any. It was flogged for poor functionality which ultimately subjected players to a rather dry gameplay experience. Right on his side, he defeated the notorious Red Ribbon Army. And when the Demon King Piccolo rose from the shadows bent on world domination, Goku was once again there. Number 16, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. 
This action role-playing game largely centered around team fighting and the multiplayer cooperative play, which was an interesting concept. However, this introduced a new issue as the two players were not able to play on the same console. And as expected, this was very distasteful for players as they often pondered how a multiplayer game could possess such a restriction. Additionally, the game was criticized for having limited combat and unbalanced teams in a battle mode. Up next in number 15 is Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu. It is a fighting game developed by Webfoot Technologies and published by Atari for the Game Boy Advance. Upon its release, Dragon Ball Z Taiketsu garnered overwhelmingly and pleasant reviews from acclaimed critics who collectively slapped it with the low ratings. Many felt as though no real effort or care went to his creation as it was unpolished and unplayable for some. Critics specifically cited its character models lack the anime flair due to the absence of unique attacks. The game basically lacks sounds and the air battles are simply done with a lot of a button mashing. Number 14 in our list is Dragon Ball Z for Kinect. It is the first person fighting game developed by Spike and published by Bandai Namco for the Xbox 360. The perspective from which the game is played is interesting, but its limitations were very much pronounced. During battles, the player retains control only over limited movement and dodging techniques. Gamers never respond well to limitations or what they deem to be unwarranted restrictions, and also the critics echoed their sentiments. The game struggled to gain any support and was labeled a flop shortly thereafter. Number 13 is Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Battle 22. It is a fighting game that was developed by Toes and published by Bandai Namco for the PlayStation. But unfortunately, the name says all there is to the game and it is a game based on Dragon Ball Z series that features battles and 22 is there because the game features 22 playable characters from the series. The game never received a favorable rating which comes as a surprise to no one who has played it. Many critics labeled it a waste of money which is a harsh statement that was never met with any resistance. Up next at number 12 is Dragon Ball GT The Final Bout. Developed and published by Bandai Namco for PlayStation, and Dragon Ball GT Final Bout is one of those Dragon Ball Z fighting games that failed to receive nods from players and critics alike. Irrespective of the name, the game story had no direct correlation to the Dragon Ball GT anime series. This never sat well with the fans as there is no way they could claim this is to be a Dragon Ball game. If the developers had managed to make up for the disappointing story with a good gameplay, then something could be salvaged but even that was a disaster. The reviews were unsurprisingly overwhelmingly negative and the game was labeled one of the worst Dragon Ball games ever made. Number 11, Dragon Ball 
Revenge of King Piccolo. This action-adventure beat-em-up platform game was developed by Media Vision for the Wii and was also known as Dragon Ball World's Greatest Adventure in Japan, which is very much contrary to the actual adventure the game provided. Some critics made compelling arguments that this is more of a primer than a full Dragon Ball title, but none labeled it as a bad game. It was not the worst, but hardly anybody's favorite. Critics cited its gameplay as the simple that die-hard fans will not appreciate. We're still counting down the worst Dragon Ball Z games ever made. We're halfway through our countdown with Dragon Ball Z3 Risen Ninzajinen. This is a role-playing card game that was published by Bandai and developed by Toe Software Incorporated for the NES. It was released in 1992, a time when gaming graphics could not sufficiently compensate for gameplay deficiencies. So the gameplay was subjected to much scrutiny. The action-packed nature of the series somewhat explains the unforbearable reception that the card game received as it never delivered a game in the genre the fans desired and it failed to be innovative enough to preserve interest. Number 9 is Dragon Ball GT Transformation. This is a side-scroller beat-em-up was developed by Webfoot Technologies and published by Atari for the Game Boy Advance in 2005. The game was slotted perfectly within the genre with a generic combat system that was adjusted to match the Dragon Ball lore. It was not a bad game, but it was nothing to write home about. Its reception was average or mixed for the most part, which suggests that it wasn't a failure, but it was no huge success by Dragon Ball standards. Critic reviews say that the game is too short and that the players can hope to rent it instead of buying it. The game also offers less than average graphics and flawed controls. Up next at number 8 is Dragon Ball Shinrin no Nazu. It is an action game developed by Toe Software Incorporated and published by Bandai in 1986. It is the second video game released based on the Dragon Ball series. It was released in the US two years after its Japan release with slightly altered graphics under the name Dragon Power. Those who have to play the game say its hit detection sucked and the character's health is constantly draining. Its music was also slammed for being repetitive. The US version also removed all references to the source's material and had a horrible translation due to the fact that the anime has not aired there yet. Number 7 is Dragon Ball Z Super Botoden. This fighting game is the first installment in the Botoden video game series. It was published and developed by Bandai for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The game has sold over 1.45 million copies in Japan and it's still the best selling Dragon Ball related video game in Japan to date. Its reception was mixed with negative reviews citing its merely average graphics and basic gameplay with lack of a power-ups and shaky controls as it flows.
Number 6 is Dragon Ball Z Super Batoden 3. As the name suggests, it is the third installment in the Super Batoden series, which means that the game is now beyond the forgivable pioneering stages, so its assessment is much more strict. It was heavily criticized for having no story mode in the game as opposed to its predecessors. In addition, there was not much growth in the gameplay, which players found it very disappointing. But today's standards, it is one of the worst Dragon Ball games ever released. At number 5 is the Dragon Ball Z, The Call of Destiny. It is a fighting game published and developed by Bandai for the Mega Drive. The game features a 6-button control configuration similar to Street Fighter 2 and mirrored match of the mechanics. According to critics, its graphics were destined for a Mega Drive game but beyond that, there is nothing alarmingly spectacular. It was a decent game at the time that would be ranked amongst the worst should it be compared with all other Dragon Ball games. At number 4 is the Dragon Ball Z collectible card game. As the game's title suggests, it is a collectible card game that is based on the hit Dragon Ball Z anime series. It uses screen captures of the anime to attempt to recreate the famous events and battle scene in the anime. In all fairness, it pleases everyone who is a card game and a Dragon Ball enthusiast. But unfortunately, that is not the majority of the Dragon Ball fun base. so should the game be graded by the whole and it will be rated one of the worst Dragon Ball games ever by default. Number 3 on our list is Dragon Ball Plan to Eradicate the Super Saiyans. It is a card battle role-playing game that was published by Bandai and developed by Toes for the Playdia. It features overlay potent RNG factors that serve as a deterrent as the player's movement and battle choices are dictated by the randomly generated playing cards. That Coupled with the fact that there is a limited playable character rooster of just Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, Trunks, and Vegeta. Which means the game is a long way from being anybody's favorite. The plan to eradicate the Saiyans. Number 2, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkaichi. It is a fighting game developed by Spike Chunsoft and published by Atari for the PlayStation 2. In many instances, the game was praised for its high fighter count and detailed cell shaded graphics, as well as the high amount of fun service to Dragon Ball Z fans. The resounding criticism it received was unnecessary complexity of the controls. Players then mind complex gameplay mechanics as it provides depth to a game and raises the skill selling. Complex controls made a game inaccessible to many which lead to it being rated one of the worst Dragon Ball Z games.
And we're down to our final game in our list of the worst Dragon Ball games ever made. It is the Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2. It is the fighting game developed by Dimst and published by Terry. The game received slightly better reviews than its predecessor, so if you're familiar with its reception of Dragon Ball Z Budokai, then you will also know that a slight improvement is still nowhere near good enough. On a slight more positive note, the game does feature cel-shaded graphics that critics commended, but their quarrel with the gameplay persisted. Improvements were spotted, but not enough to prevent it from being classed among the worst Dragon Ball games. And there you have it! The top 20 worst Dragon Ball games ever made. This list proves that simply branding a game with a popular franchise won't guarantee its success as gamers to look for overall experience. Did we miss any games on the list? Tell us more about it in the comment box below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for the notification of our latest videos. Until next time, this has been your host, Riri.